Welcome back to the Crochet Crowdos with my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Popcorn Square Crochet Tote Bag. Now this kind of bag is really unique in the sense that the way that it's put together and you will find many other patterns that are available out there that are literally the squares and put together exactly the same way. So I'm going to make this a two-part video series and the second part will be linked in the video description on how to put this together. My main goal today is just to show you how the handle is made and how one of these squares and the other video is gonna show you how it's gonna assemble and put them together in order to do that. And the reason why I'm separating it is that the next video of putting this together can apply to other patterns that exist out there that are examples like this. This is the Karen um, cotton cakes and this is exactly the same way that it's put together. Don't let the shape fool you. The way that these squares are is the same in the sense of putting it together. Now what you'll see here is that this one here is more of a flat. This one has texture so you'll see that it, it can behave a little bit differently but the join on how things are put together is in the same formation but sometimes it will ask you to slip stitch. Sometimes it will ask you to single crochet and etc. and we'll cover that in video number two. So this video we're gonna concentrate on making this. I did make this with Lily Sugar and Cream yarn and I used a total of five balls. So Lily Sugar and Cream, you see what I got left here of the one side or one flavor and the colors that I used you will find in the more information of this video. You will find a link to this particular pattern and I will link that those colors there. I will say it here just in case you uh, don't feel like going over there. I used the color Overcast, Beach Glass, light blue, teal and hot blue and I just randomly did uh, these particular ideas. So there are a total of 13 squares. So I made one as overcast which is right here and then the other um, ones I did three of each of these four colors and I just randomly put it into the bag. Let me show you my sample where I am at right now and I'll show you how to make one of these squares. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal here. So currently I'm right here. The next video I'm gonna show a lot more detail but this is where I am. The bottom one was the, the overcast and the rest of it is just kind of random on how it's put in. And uh, what my goal was is not to have any of the same color butt up against on the same flat edge. Certainly I don't mind this. Anyway there was lessons to learn. That's why there's some strands uh, going out and then I also have this. So um, really neat. This, these are the handles and I'm gonna show you some tips in the next video for that. But our goal is to make these particular squares. They actually go pretty, pretty quickly at least for me and that's what I'm gonna explain how to do next and there's a diagram on page number two. On page number two is not only the crochet diagram on how one of these are made but there's actually the schematic on how these are put together and we'll talk about that in the next video and there's literally two schematics because they puzzle together and I'll explain that later. So what we have here is the crochet diagram. It's made up of four rounds and uh, one thing you gotta watch for is these popcorns in the stitches. You will notice if you really look carefully here is that you're skipping a stitch when you're in this row here. Do you see that you're skipping and then you're skipping the stitch right directly after it. It's hard to see those stitches. So that's why they're asking you to skip it. So let's begin our journey and it's just using a solid color. If you wanna change your colors and make it more random you can do side to do that but I'm just gonna teach it in a solid color today. Let's begin our stitching journey with a slip knot and this is classified as an easy level and I would agree with that as well. So chain four. So one, two, three, and four and I want you to slip stitch it to the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling it through and through and treat the remaining of this strand. You don't have to make it that long but just as it's going around the ring and you're going to move on to round number two or sorry round number one next. So let's move on. So round number one is gonna feel awkward to you especially if you do granny squares on a, on a frequent basis. It's kind of different than what we're used to. We're gonna chain three and that's your first double crochet and in the same ring going right over top of that straggler I need you to place in three more double crochet. So it's gonna be one, two and three. Got lots of cat hair today. I think my ball fell on the floor. Okay so we're gonna chain one to turn the corner and in the same uh, ring uh, another four more double crochet. So we have one, two, 
three and four. Chain one to turn another corner and four more double crochet in. This is gonna be really tight in the middle here and the point to it being tight is that um, you want it um, these stitches to be tight. It's a bag. So if it's too loose that it gets really sloppy and things can fall out. So we now have technically three sides of your square done. So one, two, three. So chain up one and do your last side. So we have one, two, three. You see I'm running out of stitches. You just gotta move it around the ring just to make space. And do the fourth one, the final. And then that's it. So you're gonna chain up one and then slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three or close to it. So one, two, three, it's right there. It's somewhat buried because it's tight. And that is your start. If you've been going over top of your straggler, I want you to get rid of that now. Any loose ends you wanna deal with on these squares on a frequent basis, you don't wanna be sewing everything together and then realize that you have all these tails hanging out because that'll drive you nuts. Let's begin round number two. In round number two, right where we're sitting is the wrong space. We need to be sitting freshly in a space. So it's telling us to slip stitch across these three plus the space. So moving along in the next double crochet, just slip stitch. I thought this would be more obvious in the appearance than it is, but um, I am using a solid color. So it, it, it didn't actually appear to be a big deal for me. I thought it was gonna be though. So now I'm ready. So round number two begins, you chain up three and in the same corner space another three more double crochet. One, two, and three and then chain one to turn the corner and then in the same space, see how I'm kind of pushing it because I know the same space I need to put in another four double crochet. So we have one, two, three and four and now the corner is complete. So I need you to chain one and then move to your next chain one corner here and then do the same thing. So it'll, it'll be four double crochets to start. Chain one and then four more double crochets into there to turn. See it's, it's unusual isn't it? If you're, you can leave me a comment if you think that's unusual. I don't see this kind of cornering very often in granny squares. So it's kind of, it threw me off when I was starting it. So once the corner's complete, you chain one and then move to your next corner. So please do the same thing on your corners and put a chain one in between them and I'll be back at the end of this round, number two. So I have my next corner done, chain one and I'm going to join it to the top of the first chain three. And round number two is now complete and moving on to round number three next. Round number three, we're sitting in the wrong spot. I need to get to the corner. So we slip stitch to the corner first. And we're now going to start applying those popcorns as we do that. So get right to the corner and let's talk. Right where I'm sitting, I want to start up and I wanna chain three. One, two, three. And I wanna double crochet back into that same corner. So consider that two double crochets before the popcorn because you'll do the popcorn and then to have two double crochets after the popcorn. To do the next popcorn, it's made up of five double crochets. So what I wanna do is just go five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then I wanna drop the loop come back to the beginning one of the five. I'm gonna show you a tip in the next uh, corner. You can't do the tip in this particular corner but you can do it in the next. So you're now just gonna pull through and chain one to lock that and in the same corner space because it's gonna be tight, you're gonna place two more double crochet. So we have one and two. Now you're gonna skip the first stitch and see how it's buried up underneath it anyway? So you're gonna skip it because you can't really access it anyway. So you come to the second one and you start double crocheting yourself across to the next corner. But you wanna stop and not do the very last stitch. 
uh, before the corner. So when you get to the chain one space just go right into the space single crochet or double crochet and then continue along until you get to the next corner. So stop before you get to the last stitch before the corner. So I have one more stitch to go and then it's the corner. So I don't wanna do that stitch. Here's what I would do if I were you. I would start this corner and I'd say okay I know that I have to do the popcorn and I know that there's two double crochet to start with this. So I'm just gonna immediately skip this one and put in seven double crochet. Just go with me for a second. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Once you have the seven done, you wanna go back to the fifth one. So one, two, three, four, five. That's the start of your popcorn is right there on the fifth one. So instead of just saying okay I'm gonna put in two double crochets and then I'm gonna restart my count to five, I'm just gonna start and say I'm gonna do seven and then go back to the fifth one, pull through, chain one to lock it and then put the next two double crochet in. I find it's easier to count it that way than it is to separate the counting. It's up to you on how you wanna do that. So once you're beyond that corner you skip the first one out. It's somewhat buried anyway. So you start the next one and you double crochet across and you stop at the one that's right before the corner. And remember to go into that chain one space. Okay, nice and easy. So I want you to exercise the same idea for your corners all the way around at this point. So I stop at the one right before the corner. I wanna put in my seven in there. I wanna pop one back onto the fifth one and then I put two more double crochets in there and then I move along. Please do this for the remaining of round number three. When you get all the way around you're skipping the very last one and then you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three and begin round number four as your final round. Let's begin number four. Number four is a duplicate of what you just did here on round number um, three. The only difference is is that our corner is no longer a chain one. Our corner is in the top of the popcorn. So we have to get there first. So we're just gonna just slip stitch ourselves to the top of the popcorn. Okay and that chain one is the one that locked it. So the chain one is the one that is the actual corner of your of your square. So then we begin again by chaining three. That's your first double crochet and then you're going to double crochet again. This is gonna be really tight going in here. There's not a lot of space to work with. So there's your two. We need to create a popcorn so it's five more double crochets into that little tight spot. So we have one, two, three, four, and five and then we just have to go back to the fifth one to make the popcorn. Chain one to lock it and in that same tight spot you are going to apply two more double crochet. It's tight so if you if that drives you crazy that's that's the rules of the game. It's tight and you want that. So what you have to pay attention to is that you have to skip the first one out. So th see that this is the popcorn. This is the first solo stitch by itself. So you're gonna skip this one and you're just gonna start double crocheting on the, the next one all the way to the other uh, corner but you, you don't crochet the one right before the corner like you did before in the last round. So that remains to be true. So the difference is, is that the corner position is on the top of the popcorn no longer a chain one space. That's the only difference really. So I'm looking as it going across. So I know that there's two double crochets that make up in that corner. So I'm gonna go into the first one and then I'm not gonna do the second. I'm going to go to the top of the popcorn. It's the chain one that makes the, the closing. And then this I would say do seven double crochets in, like I showed you in the last round. So this is gonna be two, three, four, five, six, 
and seven. And once that seven's done, go back to the fifth one, pick it up, pull through, chain one to lock, and in that same tight spot, two more double crochet. And then we have to skip the first stitch out. It's easy to determine that the first, this is actually part of the stitch here. This is part of the, the popcorn. So don't include that one as the first one you're skipping. It's this one right here. If you're not sure, look where the corners are coming out and the two and you're skipping the first one going and starting in the second. So please do this all the way around. This is the, fifth, uh, the fourth and final round. When you get all the way around, you are skipping the very last one before the popcorn like you normally would have and then you're just going to slip stitch to the first. You're officially now done your squares and so what I would strongly recommend to you is that don't leave all your tails for the end. Um, it'll just be more of a headache for you. So I would turn it around and get rid of your tails right away. The best way to get rid of tails is to throw it through a tapestry needle. If you weave it in with your crochet hook unless you're extremely gifted which you could be. Um, I'm not that gifted but you just have to make sure that you just weave yourself. So stay away from the edge because you will be using the edge later to attach these together to make this bag. So just kind of gliding up underneath. So you go through once and then if you separate fibers it's better. It's harder to separate this out if you view, if you divide up the fibers. Some people say, claim that this stuff still falls out. I've not had that experience but who knows right? So back and forth a total of three times and you can set this in your pile. You need a total of 13 of these so if you're doing a solid bag or a colorful bag you can decide what your breakdown is gonna be and this would be the popcorn square in granny format and what I need you to do uh, we're gonna uh, just quickly review the handles and then I'm gonna ask you to go to the next video on how to put this together. So let's begin and you're going to start with a slip knot and you just need to chain 75. So I'm not gonna do 75 but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you go all the way to 75. Once you're done that then you're just gonna go second chain from the hook and you're just going to single crochet yourself across. This would be row number one. Nice and straightforward, easy. I like going on the back hump of the chain. If you prefer not to, that's your business. You decide. You are the artist at the end of the day. And there's no crochet police to slap your wrist anyway. <laughs> Thank God for that, right? Okay, so you're gonna do that and then you're gonna turn your work. That was row one. Turn, chain one, and then just single cr uh, crochet yourself. I literally started by making the uh, the handles first even though it's the last part of this tutorial. And the reason why I wanted to do that is that I wanted to warm up my hands before I did the granny square work. Um, my hands were kind of stiff so I felt like the, the handles were the best part uh, place to start for me. So turn your work. That was row two. Single crocheting back and across. That was number three. Turn your work and let's do number the four. So you're going to notice that when you're done this that your ending will be in the opposite side to where the strand started. See the strand? So you'll be on the opposite side when you're going to do that. So if you wanna leave longer strands just sew that. I'm not going to use those strands to sew to the back because I have a reason. And once you have the four uh, uh, rows complete like that you will have a handle that resembles this. So proceed to the next video. Just see the video information link. Uh, in, the, in the video information I have a link for it and that's gonna be the next part if you'd like to continue along with me today.